What, um, what qualities would you be looking for? Oh, I don't know. Ah, uh, of course you do. Hmm. Well, loyalty, strength, breeding. I'd be good at that. Oh my god, shut up, shut up, shut up! Yeah, All Dogs Go to Heaven is kind of a messy tree. Making a sequel to All Dogs Go to Heaven was going to be a risk, in my opinion, because they kind of closed out the ending for All Dogs Go to Heaven. It kind of like... Like, the story may not have been the best, but, like, it kind of, like, felt complete at the very end. It felt like, you know, Charlie had a complete arc and didn't need to continue at all. And now with this sequel, he's kind of just back on Earth. <laughs> to be completely honest, it feels like majority of the budget went to the music and the casting of this instead of the animation. The animation of this movie is kind of bad to say the least it's kind of hard to look at because a lot of the times there's blurry frames um the the animation the sort of like color palette they were going for uh for heaven it doesn't necessarily work or the rest of the world it doesn't really work except for the prison like the hell the prison system or whatever that sort of like area it's like an alcatraz in this little island but um anyway um that color palette like like the way they were coloring that it makes a lot of sense and i think it's actually pretty good it's th it's just that like when you translate that to like day and heaven and all these other places it doesn't really fit too well there's also a lot of animation inconsistencies which kind of kind of like they don't matter too much but at the same time they are there and some of them kind of hurt the story and don't really explain the story too much man had to turn black to put on the burners what the <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Time to go. Already? Charlie had a red color on before this, and apparently it just disappears. David, can Sasha take you home? Charlie, don't go. Hey, I'll always be And now it's suddenly back. What are you guys doing? I obviously have no clue what happened, but I think the animation team just didn't get paid too much, so this is what happened. Anyway, talking about the music and the casting, the casting is actually like extremely good. I love a lot of the vocal talent that's going on here. And the music, it's it's actually pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Like majority of these tracks are either rememberable or they're just like, you know, decent. Like the music here is actually kind of a treat. Easy street. The sun's always shining. What good's a hustler without a scam? I'm ways of talent. That's all that I am. Ooh. If yeah, you yeah, want yeah. someone to buy that sweet talk that you guys all love to spout. This moment changed the whole trajectory of my life. I'm not going to lie. As a kid... I can say this full heartedly, I was super attracted to this character as a kid, as a kid, as a kid. If you wanna dance cheek to cheek, then go yeah. home and talk all night long. Also, as a little side note, because I kind of want to explain why I was attracted to all these like singing characters as a kid. Um, basically, I figured it out later in life, and it's like I enjoy singing. I enjoy people who sing their heart out and like have so much passion, have so much like good vocal talent that like really gets to me the music carries a lot of this movie i have to say the story is a mixed bag i'm not really sure how to feel about it because a lot of it just has a lot of inconsistencies that sort of like don't keep up with the main story and it feels like the ending was kind of rushed and they just sort of like i don't know was like stressed for time just had to put this out um and make money i don't know what went on characters in this movie also took a big downgrade especially the returning characters like carface and um itchy like those two kind of feel 
like they fit the plot and their like their personalities from the last movie are just kind of gone and if they are there it's very like one dimensional and not the greatest look for them in general carface was the main big villain in the first movie and he was very egotistical and money hungry and uh actually very evil but in this movie and all dogs go to heaven too he's basically cast off as a henchman and he's made fun of he's like a joke now kind of and i don't know if i agree with that itchy in the first movie was very charismatic he loved his best friend charlie but like that wasn't his only trait for per, like per se um he also was like he had anxiety which they focus on a lot in all dogs go to heaven too also um having short legs which they won't shut up about in all dogs go to heaven too i don't know why he was also very intelligent and also a craftsman he made like a whole casino by himself basically like he he had a lot of good traits in all dogs go to heaven it's just that like in the second one they just dumbed him down so much and it felt like he wasn't the, the same character at all which is weird because i feel like they casted the same voice actor in the first uh, all dogs go to heaven movie uh itchy that itchy for the second one so i don't know they just wrote him different then there's charlie barkin who is an interesting case to say the least in the first movie he was very egotistical and he barely cared for his friends at all like he did care but he would put himself over like friends or whatever his whatever his needs were they were basically first and his friends were just uh kind of shoved to the side if they didn't fit that agenda but throughout the first movie he actually becomes a better person uh taking care of this kid and it makes the payoff for that end of the first movie Movie, much more worth it in my opinion and much more earned in the second movie he basically like sort of retreads these sort of ideas that he had in I, I, all dogs go to heaven the first one and it, it kind of like it kind of like feels like he didn't really learn anything from it i was absolutely fine with him keeping a snarky and sassy nature it's just that like uh in the second movie he just feels like he retreads some of the same lessons and he still has like some of the same problems like um he's still like breaking promises he's still thinking of himself putting himself his needs before everything else and he actually like kind of almost destroys heaven in general because of it so so i don't really know what the purpose of majority of these characters are really they kind of just feel the same it's kind of like the same movie but just the music is way better and um there's just a slightly different lesson to learn i don't even know if there's a lesson to be learned per se from this movie because charlie kind of gets rewarded for being a piece of shit so what the hell anyway let's get into the story okay so the story starts out charlie is in heaven it starts out in heaven and carface is apparently friends with charlie which i don't really get if you think back to the first movie carface killed charlie and then afterwards tried to kill him again multiple times and you're telling me you guys are just friends now i don't give a fuck if it's heaven or not like we're not friends bro you you stay on your side charlie is waiting for itchy to come through the pearly gates because itchy is gonna die soon or at least probably has died um he's on the waiting list heaven has like a little waiting list like <laughs> if you're cool enough to get in like a club type deal which is weird as fuck but you know <laughs> itchy gets in and meets up with charlie and they talk about heaven and charlie sings a little song about heaven okay it's too heavy heavenly here i don't want to play the clip again so i'm just going to spit it oh ooh, wait oh yeah he sings about that and carface he's um he's actually like seen as one of the good angels he got a little pin which the pins don't really matter i'm not really going to talk about it too much but yeah he um he's seen as a good angel and uh yeah <sighs> how do i explain this he steals Gabriel's horn. So there are humans in heaven, obviously, but um, they use this little, they use Gabriel's horn to open up the pearly gates for the dogs, I'm guessing for humans, but we don't see for the humans. And uh, every time he toots it, uh, <laughs> you know, the gates open. And so that happens, Carface steals that, and then he heads down to earth, which is 
you know, interesting. He's on his own little journey, his own little path. <laughs> when going to Earth, which in order to get to Earth, he had to open up the pearly gates with uh, Gabriel's horn, which was a whole shabackle. I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm gonna make it a fucking word. Going to Earth, he loses the horn in San Francisco, which is an interesting place to cast your ship, but I get it. A day or something like that passes, and then uh, the dogs are aware that Gabriel's horn is actually gone, and Annabelle, the lead head of the dogs from the old movie, uh, she's still as cute as ever. I don't even care. Even though she's more like saturated, she's still very cute. I can't lie. She's panicking and she's trying to pick out one dog to send out um, to Earth in order to retrieve the horn. And Charlie's just like, oh my god, this is my chance to actually like live life again. And so he volunteer, uh, excuse me, he volunteers as tribute. And so uh, Annabelle picks him. And the weirdest part is that he uh, Annabelle also sends Itchy and. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Annabelle very clearly knows Charlie's intentions and Charlie's actions. And uh, it doesn't make sense why she wouldn't send anybody else besides Itchy to go with Charlie in order to watch over him. It just doesn't make any sense. But I digress. They go to Earth and they're just trying to have a good time. They land in San Francisco. And the first thing they do is hit up a little nightclub. They, they want to party because, you know, Charlie's just like about that life, even though he's dead. And when walking into the nightclub he actually starts to realize i'm invisible and nobody here sees me and i can't really interact with anything which is which is true and false there there there's a lot of inconsistencies with that because there's certain things charlie can interact with and or pick up as a ghost as an invisible dog but then I don't know they're supposed to be invisible can't be seen by anyone can't like move anything so their rules are very bendy hey what am I invisible I'll just help myself what? I didn't recognize this before but why can he slide and interact with tables like is that the one thing ghosts can do anyway charlie's pissed off but the nightclub just continues with their activities and uh they send up a singer called sasha which is as a kid i had the biggest crush on this dog i loved him to death i thought they were just the cutest thing ever and uh, i ain't gonna lie a little bit i was attracted to them as a kid as a kid it's it's okay well, not necessarily, okay? It's it's decent when you're a kid. Well, grown up, I, I ain't about that life anymore. I already said that multiple times, but like, I gotta let people know! Charlie instantly falls in love, but when he tries to interact with this girl, he realizes he's invisible. He can't interact with her. And uh, he ends up meeting Carface, who has this red collar on him. And he's like, wow, why can you interact with everybody? And like, where'd you get this collar in order to interact with everybody? And so Carface basically uh, shows him to this this person, this, I don't know what the fuck it is. It's, it's like a, it's supposed to be a dog, but it's very clearly not a dog. It's like, it's interesting. But yeah, Carface shows Charlie and Itchy to his boss, which is like this fake little dog. And so uh, he hands out, he gives out these red collars, which make uh, Charlie and uh, Itchy human, not human, uh, physical beings <laughs> on this planet uh i don't know what the fuck that was but yeah um so gives them that color but the thing is there's a little time limit to it it disappears on sundown and so charlie has to do whatever he wants to do by sundown tomorrow and so he goes to uh he goes back to sasha which she just wanted to get food that's why she was like singing all seductively she was just trying to get food for a kid she has back home and she doesn't really get that she tries to steal some food but charlie's just acting all weird upon her and be like hey you know you know you know i'm a boy <laughs> you're a girl <laughs> I'm not gonna make the skater boy joke because I already made that a million times. But yeah, Charlie's being a little creepy and uh, Sasha just like books it out of there. She's just like, nah, I ain't about this shit no more. And so <laughs> Charlie does the same thing and uh, picks up her food that she was gonna take, uh, steal from the nightclub. And um, <laughs> he stalks her. He stalks her to this little backyard and when he enters, Sasha's just like, pissed off just like dude what are you doing here why are you being so creepy and um charlie just says you know you forgot all this food back there trying to like 
ease his way in you know what i'm saying and you know sasha's thankful for it because you know her kid has to live and that's absolutely fine it's just that like you know at the end of the day that doesn't like excuse you being creepy as fuck yeah sasha takes the food to the kid and it turns out the kid is a real kid it's a human kid and so we kind of have the same situation as all dogs just go to heaven one but like less depressing very less depressing i'm not gonna lie david is his name david can actually hear and understand them and so like he's freaking out obviously because he hasn't heard a dog talk and charlie just says i'm your guardian angel he's trying to play off this dumb shit and you know itchy's kind of pissed off itchy throughout this whole movie's just like charlie don't give out any information you don't need to and charlie's just like huh, nah i'm just do whatever the fuck so charlie actually convinces david he's an angel and sauce is just like okay well all this weird shit is going on so why don't you take david home for me since you can actually communicate with him and charlie charlie had like a miracle he had a miracle which was supposed to be used in an emergency it, it seemed like it was going to be a big thing but then it turned out not to be because he uses it to kiss sasha unconsensually and that's low-key assault and so sasha just pops off on charlie and uh david can actually hear sasha now and now this is a lot to take in for david but he's just like you know what? i'm a little kid at the end of the day i don't give a fuck about any of this i just want to do my magic david is a magician and he's very good at magic and so they decide to go to central square or something like that well i'm just gonna call it easy street because that's what the song name is and that's what i remember it by they go to easy street in order to make david some money and um but like um before going there they actually uh <laughs> they actually get like sidetracked but because uh charlie hears gabriel's horn and tries to bust it out out, out of the police station excuse me <laughs> This part is just random and stupid as all hell. So yeah, a goofy little chase happens in order to retrieve Gabriel's horn, and once they retrieve it, Charlie decides to dump it in the ocean. Like, there's a net, but like at the same time, it doesn't really matter, he just dumps it in the ocean, and Itchy just looks down on him like, we, we got the horn, we can leave now, but Charlie has unfinished business with Sasha and, well, I guess David, Dave, even though David's like a side piece, basically. Not, not a side piece, a side story, excuse me, oh my god. Also, I forgot to talk about Easy Street, but basically it's just a little song number of David doing magic and then uh, at the very end, David uh, fucks up and everybody leaves him and now he feels like a failure. Not too big of importance, so I'm just gonna, that's how I'm gonna summarize it. And so this next part is where the story feels very rushed and very iffy in my opinion so david spills the main reason he ran away from home it's that he has a stepmom and his normal mom died and he's like still trying to process that and the stepmom is having a kid with the father and so he feels like he's being replaced and shoved out of the family which is honestly very valid this is like very valid shit i can't lie and charlie basically tells a story that's relatable to david's situation and david's just like all right let's go um i'm okay to go home now as long as you take me and then charlie kind of promised that but at the same time you know th there there's a timer on the collar still and so he kind of like trails away and sasha follows him and we get our next song number because uh charlie's just like man i met somebody special and it's supposed to be sasha but like they haven't really been clicking or bonding throughout this whole shit and sasha just like i sasha just gives in this it, it does this doesn't make sense sasha has been very independent and against uh charlie's advances up until this moment and there wasn't really any big connection or any big building character building to make this happen they just get forced into singing about loving each other and then they try to kiss at the very end but you know the collar runs out because the sun sets and now the colors are gone so he's invisible again and so um charlie <laughs> charlie's down bad and he's like man i didn't get that kiss i didn't get what i want so uh i'm gonna head back to red which is the person i was talking about carface's boss um the person that looked like a dog 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna go back to there and get another collar. Red gave him the leashes for free last time, but this time he's gonna need actual money or a trade offer. And so Charlie decides to um, trade off Gabriel's horn in order to like obtain <laughs> basically a red collar so he can bust his nut. That's literally all this is about at the end of the day. You can trust me. This isn't about trust. A deal with me is binding. I don't know why this line just goes kind of hard. And so he makes a deal with Red, and it turns out Red is the devil. And so now he's forced to get the horn in order to save his friends. He grabs the horn and takes it to Red's little asylum in the middle of nowhere on a little island. And uh, it, Red is basically going to grab all the dogs from heaven and bring them down to this asylum, jail them all. And it's a cat's world now because... I guess all cats go to hell. <laughs> Since Red has the horn, he doesn't really care about Charlie and his friends anymore, so he lets them go. And as he's bringing people down, Charlie looks back and he's like, wow, I kind of fucked up big time. This is all me. I'm going to go try and fix this shit. And he tries to fix it. He has this big fight with Red alongside his friends because his friends were going to leave, but they weren't leaving without Charlie. And so they have this big fight and, you know, a resolution happens. Blah, 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 blah. Red's a scared of water. He, he can't really like touch water because cats are afraid of water or whatever the fuck, which is kind of stupid, but whatever the fuck. And what irritates me more than, you know, the devil basically dying to water and fall damage um, is that Itchy, they don't explain why Itchy still has a collar. They don't explain that whatsoever. So Itchy's just able to be seen and um also able to like interact with things and he doesn't have a, it's inconsistent because he doesn't have a collar in some scenes he doesn't have a collar but in some scenes he does have a collar and it shouldn't be like that because he never got another collar he wasn't a part of the deal he wasn't in that situation at all so it it doesn't make any sense why he has a collar at all. Anyway, the devil's dead and Carface gets drugged down to hell. Guess not all dogs go to heaven, right? Ooh. And that's basically the resolution, except it's not. It continues for a little bit more, okay? Charlie and Itchy go back to heaven, except they get stopped because Annabelle's just like, well, even though you put us all in danger and you literally could have ruined heaven for everybody, we're gonna give you a little pass you, you can come back in 20 years and they say 20 years as if a dog's gonna live 20 years i uh, charlie's not living for 20 years he gets to go back to earth and have another life which is kind of bullshit but anyway he gets to go back to earth and have another life and uh he has another life with sasha and david and that is the resolution because i guess not all dogs go to heaven it's some dogs go to hell some dogs get another chance Nothing makes sense. <laughs> what? What is it, girl? Can you believe it? <laughs> Why was Sasha tweaking, bro? She was having like an episode. What the hell? Not only did this movie didn't need to exist, it had a lot of inconsistencies. And also, if you aren't listening to a musical number, you're kind of being bored throughout. Like, this movie's not necessarily the funnest watch, especially with the animation kind of like being blurry, being hard to look at at times it's it's kind of rough i love this movie to death as a child but nowadays i can live without it i think i'm gonna give this movie a three out of ten because i believe the first one is way stronger and that's just how it is how's it going pups it's a canine and i'm <laughs> what do you know and i thought all dogs go to heaven I'm